This is a story about a genetic experiment, one that combines science and nature to produce a creature the likes of which had never been seen before. It's alive! It's alive! Yep, I think I can hear something. Meet the world's tallest dog, the Irish Wolfhound, or the original Frankenpooch. Today, Eddie Burke is meeting up with other wolfhound owners in the grounds of Farmley House in Dublin. Over the last 30 years, he's kept nearly 50 of these mighty hounds. They grow to about 34 to 36 inches at the shoulder. They'd stand over six foot tall when yeah. they'd stand on their hind legs. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't encourage that too much. We humans have played a huge role in shaping the wolfhound. They were bred to be large because they had to hunt and they were able to hunt wolves and deer in the old days. Their height meant that they could catch their prey, grab them by the neck and kill them very quickly. The next chapter of this story takes place in the 1860s. I'm off to meet Betty Murphy, the keeper of the Irish Wolfhound Archives, accompanied by my new friend, Shannon. Betty has the notebooks of Captain George Graham, a dog breeder from Gloucestershire, who came to Ireland in the aftermath of a devastating famine when the breed was in a sorry state. What was his role in reviving the breed, if you like? He said, we have to try and go back to the original robust uh, wolfhound. And, and he said in his own words, though sadly it can only be seen in a very few places at this stage, it, it was almost extinct. Graham's solution was to make a genetic intervention using a close cousin of the wolfhound. He used deerhound blood, um, selecting deerhounds that were of good size. Captain Graham saved the breed. He also wrote the breed standard, a checklist of the features of the ideal wolfhound. They're going down to the sort of the individual features. For example, the head, um, the shape of the top line, the angulation of the forequarters, the angulation of the hindquarters. So how would Captain Graham's breed standard have been used? The first place it would be used in, uh, would be at dog shows. George Graham was striving to improve the breed, and in the 20th century, dogs which met his strict criteria were champions. Naturally, breeders wanted to use them to create the next generation of champions, but there was a problem. Dr Maura Lyons is an expert on wolfhound genetics. She has charted the legacy of one male dog who fathered pups around the world. There is a particular sire who was born in 1992. He was a really handsome hound and he won a lot of shows, so people wanted to use him. But not only was he a really handsome hound, but he had a really handsome son who also was used quite a lot. And he also had a handsome son who was used a lot. So consequently, that particular sire is now behind 37% of the wolfhounds that are alive today. Research has revealed the effect of this kind of inbreeding, with genes causing health problems passed on through generations, rather than being weeded out by natural selection. The main concern has been a deadly heart condition, cardiomyopathy. But a genetic problem could have a genetic solution. The Irish Wolfhound database maps the interlinking family trees of the world's wolfhounds. People can look at the dog's pedigree all the way back to the 1850s. And we hope that breeders can make good decisions and breed long-lived and healthy dogs. The key factor is how much inbreeding a dog has in its genes. How does Shannon rate? We've calculated the average inbreeding within the entire population that's in the database. Yeah. And at the minute, for a five generation pedigree, the average inbreeding is 3.36. And we can see that Shannon's inbreeding is 2.44%. The numbers sound good, but what about Shannon's health? Today, he gets his annual checkup with vet Brian Jones. What you're looking at is for normal heart, the normal Regular beat. Uh -huh. Not too fast, not too slow. But strong. It's strong. I would be very happy with that dog's heart. So the future is bright for these ancient and amazing dogs. Isn't it, Chapman? <laughs>